Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer, Captain Elkhorn, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Kennedy School, Class 1-1, TAC 2-3. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. The 1-1 Tech 2-3 class team includes class officer, Lieutenant Bonner, class officer, Lieutenant Pardue, class recruit division commander, QMC Galarza, and class drill instructor, Staff Sergeant Renteria. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony is as follows. At 1000, Captain Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, United States Navy, will arrive with the guest of honor, Captain Hennings, Commanding Officer, Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Division Newport, United States Navy. Guests will be asked to rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. The commanding officer and guest of honor will address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the commanding officer and guest of honor. Guests will be asked to rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. <laughs> Officer Training Command Newport arriving. Naval Undersea Warfare Center Division Newport arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Butts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. O Heavenly King, the Comforter and Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fills all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, we give you thanks for this day of celebration. We are thankful for the life you have given us, the parents who have loved and nourished us, and the numerous friends and family members who have encouraged us on the journey of life and helped each one to arrive at this hour. We give thanks for the dedicated staff here at Officer Training Command, who helped e develop each one of these sailors into our newest naval officers. Vice Admiral Stockdale wrote, character is probably more important than knowledge. We ask that you give each one of these officers the courage to be leaders of impeccable character, models of integrity, and give them the strength they will need to weather the rough seas of leadership. 
May they hold themselves accountable each day, staying true to the values that guide them. Today they follow in the wake of the greatest naval leaders of history, selfless men and women of character who fought for the freedoms that make our country great. May they continue to carry on that legacy as they head to the fleet. Be with us today and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett A. M. Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Hennings, Captain Mattingly, Captain Carpinella, Captain Boyum, Captain Lung, Colonel Jendrizek. Distinguished guests, veterans, officer training command staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, soon to be commissioned officers of class 11 TAC 23. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I'm excited to welcome 51 of our newest graduates into one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers, that of naval officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you've done preparing these impressive leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the impressive individuals seated here. It has enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without careful guidance and support of family and friends. And on behalf of the Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, as Commanding Officer of Officer Training Command, I am proud of each and every one of you. You've had many other options in volunteering to serve your country, yet you've chosen this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve, and I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You've completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You've overcome obstacles. Nothing was handed to you except for opportunity, the opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to grow, and to lead. You've seized that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for this significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity, leading sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch, working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you are doing significant and meaningful work for our country. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Be the best and give your country 100% effort. Nothing else will suffice. The Navy and the nation expect this from you. The highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and the strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You're about to embark on a great adventure, one in which I hope you find professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you have ever had, and regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my honor and privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Captain Chad Hennings, Commanding Officer, Naval Undersea Warfare Center, Division Newport. He was born in Chicago, Illinois, and raised in Illinois and Lucerne, Indiana. After receiving a degree in aerospace engineering from the Illinois Institute of Technology, he received his commission at Officer Candidate School in 1994. After his initial training pipeline, his sea tours include the USS Toledo, 
SSN 769, USS Michigan, SSBN 727 Gold, USS Columbia, SSN 771, and USS Hampton, SSN 767. He also commanded the USS Nevada, SSNBN 733 Gold, and the USS Pennsylvania, SSBN 735 Blue. Throughout his sea tours, he supported several Western Pacific and Mediterranean deployments, conducted nine strategic deterrent patrols, and he's earned many battle efficiency awards. His shore tours include staff positions at Submarine Squadron 2, Submarine Squadron 17, Submarine Squadron 19, and the National Geospace Intelligence Agency. During his shore tours, he's earned a master's degree in modeling virtual environments and simulation from the Naval Postgraduate School and in strategic studies from the Naval War College. In September of 2017, he became an acquisition professional and served as the head of requirements and testing for the 397 Columbia class program and the deputy program manager for PMS 415 undersea defensive weapon systems. He's recently completed a tour as a program manager of PMS 401 submarine acoustic systems. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy, and we are privileged to have him with us here today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Captain Chad Hennings. Thank you, Captain Alcorn, and good morning. Thank you, Captain Carpinella, Captain Mattingly, CMC Hograver, family and friends, and especially OCS Class 1123, congratulations. About a year and a half ago, I spoke at, in this very hall at an OCS graduation. It was really special for me because it was the first time the place that where I had been from asked me to come back to give a speech. Uh, since I've been invited back, I, hopefully that I didn't screw it up the, too much the first time, and uh, I'm honored to be here. So Class 1123, I hope you're ready, and I know you are. You are going into a dangerous world out there. Since my last speech, Russia has invaded Ukraine and demonstrated increased aggression in that region of the world. China continues a military buildup, both in terms of pure numbers of ships and aircraft, as well as the exponential rise in their capabilities and advancements. China builds around 40% of the world's commercial and military ships. When you consider the rec recent AUKUS agreement and add the UK and Australia with the United States capability, our number is 1.1% of the world's ships. We are not gonna outbuild China in the near term. It is you, our leaders, sailors, and capabilities that will carry the day. And when you get to the fleet, if you haven't heard this already, that coming day of potential conflict is not discussed as 10, 15, or 20 years from now. Our leaders consistently send the message that the readiness to fight in a global conflict with a peer competitor needs to be within the next five years. Additionally, with an increased number, as well as veracity of exercises in the Taiwan Strait, China moves more and more towards a violent reunification with Taiwan, as opposed to a peaceful one. And why is all this important? Well, those inside the Beltway in Washington, D.C. will tell you that nations like China and Russia don't, and I'll put it in quotes, adhere to international norms. Well, what does this mean? After all, that's great diplomatic speak. One thing I'll tell you, though, is that diplomat speak did not make me join or serve going on 28 years in the United States Navy. Being a child of the Cold War, it was stories that in the old Soviet Union that, that the KGB could show up to your house and you or one of your relatives were never heard from again. Those were the things that motivated me. Make no mistake, this is a battle of cultures and norms. Since President Xi Jinping has come to power, the Chinese Communist Party has instituted public confessions on their public TV feed, CCTV, by dissidents, lawyers, and activists who dare cross the party's will and desires. While bloodless, these events echo the intent of the Cultural Revolution and have the effect of discouraging questioning of the government as well as diminishing any message of the person in the forced confession. This is just one of many author 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 sorry, authoritarian measures that President Xi has started since coming to power. It is absolutely imperative that the values of our constitution-based republic, values embraced by most of the world since the end of the Cold War, continue to influence the globe. So now that I'm done depressing you, Here's why you should be excited to start your careers, and this is where I tend to get a little cocky. It was said that the sun never sets on the British Empire. Well, the same is true of the U.S. Navy. It is truly a 24-7, 365 worldwide deployed fleet. Despite all the dire talk regarding China and Taiwan, it should be noted that all the discussion revolves around fighting in the Taiwan Strait. There is no talk of the Chinese fight being in the North Atlantic or the Caribbean closer to our turf and threatening our homeland. While the Chinese have done a lot to bolster how formidable they are in their own backyard, frankly, there isn't a lot of discussion about their ability to fight outside the South China or Yellow Sea. 
Right now, any potential conflict with China or Russia is a completely away game type discussion, fighting on the visitors' playing fields. This is a good position to be in, and it's not because China doesn't aim to be a global power. The ability to choose the field where we fight is due to the sacrifice in war or in peace of constantly sailing the world and showing the flag. It is a tradition you should absolutely be proud of. As I'm retiring soon and want to enjoy that retirement, please keep this advantage, and I know you will. The ability to uh, what would any OCS graduation be without some leadership advice? So here's my first. And your future superior officers can thank me later. You will quickly find, even in your first jobs, leading sailors, that you will have certain authorities and your boss will hold certain other higher level ones. Like everything, there will be certain situations that are not black and white and fit into neat, neat little boxes. They'll be gray. And you will wonder if you should get your boss's input or even their decision. But if your boss is not constantly, is not tugging back slightly occasionally at your authority as a leader from time to time, then you're not using that full authority. Push the envelope, just don't rip it. I have found most of my bosses preferred those who had to get tugged back and put back in the box from time to time than those who refused to use all that authority and leadership at their disposal. Secondly, don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. Very little will ir irritate your sailors more than you waiting on both perfect and complete data before making a decision. Think about what you reasonably needed to know, get that data, and make that decision. Unfortunately, there's no magic algorithm for this, and there's gonna be some trial and error in your experiences. If your decision is a bad one, think about the reasons it was bad and tweak that decision process. People respect decision makers who have the ability to act decisively rather than those who waffle and waver, waiting for all information to come in and leave, leaving others waiting. And oftentimes, decisions that may have been perfect days or even weeks prior are the same as they would have been anyway, and they can be worse than those made with, limited, with a more limited amount of information, but more timely made. Lastly, there's a difference between morale and happiness. Morale is a sense of purpose, loyalty, alignment, and determination to a mission. It is different from liking th everything all, if not most of the time, different from being in an internal state of gladness. Strive for high morale in both yourself and your people. Happiness is the easier road, however. But happiness alone does not ensure your mission gets done, that st high standards are met, or that your people are ready for combat. You'll find high morale creates happiness when the opportunities present themselves. One of my favorite bosses I worked for put it this way, don't make your people happy, make them proud. Always remember 1123 that things worth doing are usually hard. It's kind of like foods that are good for you usually don't taste good, good as the foods that aren't. You've passed one hard thing in graduating today, a rite of passage and training where not everyone in your shoes succeeds. There will be hard things ahead, but what I can tell you is that while you may not always be happy, if you do your job to the best of your ability, you'll always be proud. Good luck, 1123, and see you in the fleet. All right, class 1123, congratulations, and we'll now take the oath of office. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? All right, class one, one, two, three, raise your, raise your right hands and repeat after me. I state your name. I Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Do hereby accept such appointment. Do hereby accept such appointment. And do solemnly swear. And do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose, of evasion, or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Hu Yang, congratulations, 1123. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer and guests of honor for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command, Newport. Anton McGee has been awarded the Commander Jack Leavitt Leadership Award, having been chosen by his peers as a candidate who most inspired his class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. Anton McGee has also been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Academics Award for obtaining the highest academic average while attending Officer Candidate School. Anson McGee has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Bush has been awarded the Lieutenant Thomas Eady Honor Award for achieving the highest average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. Anson Bush has also been awarded the Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award for earning the highest overall grade in physical fitness. The award is presented by the Marine Corps League. Anson Bush has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Naval Special Warfare Training Center in Coronado, California. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Please hold your applause until all graduates have been recognized. Anton Robinson has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Anson Martinez has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LSD-52 USS Pearl Harbor, home ported in San Diego, California. Anson Smith has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anton Gersbach has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anton White has been designated as a nuclear surface warfare officer and has been assigned to DDG-75 USS Donald Cook home ported in Mayport, Florida. Anton Miller has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Ajogbe has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Anson Badger has been designated as a public affairs officer and has been assigned to Defense Information School in Fort Meade, Maryland. Anson Bailey has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Barnhill has been designated as a cryptological warfare officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Baskin has been designated as a surface warfare officer and has been assigned to LCS-20 USS Cincinnati, home boarded in San Diego, California. Anson Bechamu has been designated as an information professional officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Bittescombe has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Naval Special Warfare Training Center in Coronado, California. Anson Brooks has been designated as a Student Naval A Flight Officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anson Cantrell has been designated as a Civil Engineering Corps Officer and has been assigned to Civil Engineering Corps Officer School at Port Wainimi, California. Anson Catlin has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command Center in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Chase has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-89 USS Mustin, home ported in San Diego, California. Anson Cho has been designated as a Cryptological Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Croft has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Anson Croft is a Distinguished Naval Graduate. Anson Duran has been designated as a Cryptological Warfare Officer 
and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Elam has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to CG-67 USS Shiloh, homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. Ensign Fadi Mayen has been designated as a Public Affairs Officer and has been assigned to Defense Information School in Fort Meade, Maryland. Ensign Glass has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Hatcher has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign I am Strong has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LPD-22 USS San Diego, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Jacobs has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Jajuga has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Johnson has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Key has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Kilby has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-108 USS Wayne E. Mayer, home port in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Ensign Kim has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Maloney has been designated as an Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign McCammon has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LPD-28 USS Fort Lauderdale, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Maylene has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-91 USS Pickney, homeported in San Diego, California. Ensign Maylene is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Michaels has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Patchett has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Randall has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Rhodes has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Rice has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Rice is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Ross has been designated as an aviation maintenance duty officer and has been assigned to Aviation Maintenance Schools Command in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Salcedo has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-78 USS Porter, home ported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Salcedo is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Sasson has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Sasson is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Spriggs has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-52 USS Barry, homeported in Everett, Washington. Anton Sullivan has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Tagliaferri has been designated as a Nuclear Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-51 USS Oak Hill, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Vu has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-60 USS Paul Hamilton, home ported in San Diego, California. Ensign Walker has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-57 USS Mister, home ported in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Woods has been designated as a Nuclear Submarine Officer and has been assigned to Naval Nuclear Power School in Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Stromowski has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest officers.
We will now conclude the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photo. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field. On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for attending. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the graduation ceremony.